Hi, Charlotte. Hi. Are you ready to test out brakes if we're not, that we're not sure are gonna work? Yeah. Okay. So as some of you astute viewers might notice, we missed a step. What's up everybody? My name is Elliot, but you can call me the Motory Notary because I'm a notary public and Motory is just a word I made up because it's an automotive channel. Anyway, today I'm back with my 2005 Volvo V70R, which just recently has a verifiably working all-wheel drive system. Now that was no small feat, but it doesn't matter. It's working now, just in time for it to be springtime and dry outside, which means I probably won't get to exercise the all-wheel drive system to its full potential. But them's the brakes. And speaking of brakes, that is exactly what we're gonna be tackling today. This car has a horrible pedal vibration when I slow down from even as slow as 40 miles an hour, which means I've got some warped rotors at most likely all four corners and what I can only assume are paper thin brake pads. So let's get this thing up on the jacks and get to doing a brake job. It should be a pretty straightforward thing, just like every other repair on this Volvo has been so far. I should probably knock on wood. All right, well, the car is all up on jack stands, and the first thing is to take the wheels off, or at least the wheel we're working with. And I know you're supposed to loosen the lug bolts before you get started on a job like this, but that's what the old Milwaukee is for. Ah, those are rusty. Yeah, those look great. That's what happens when the car sits outside for like four years. Seriously, some of the best looking OEM wheels. I swear. Ugh. Get out of there, lugs. All right, and for extra safety, I'm gonna put this wheel underneath the car. Right off the bat, you can see kind of rusty and that is quite the lip, which I know you can't feel. So and, uh, at least they're kind of free. So these calipers should come off. Well, first things first is there's two bolts holding this whole caliper on and believe me, they are on there. So we're going to need to use a breaker bar break because we're doing a brake job breaker bar to get those off. So I guess that's the first step. Let's do it. Ah, cool. No breaker bar needed. Yeah. Guys, I would show you what's happening, but it's behind here. Just imagine two bolts. Yeah. And they are on there. They're hard to break loose. I think this video is going to be full of those kind of puns. All right. The next step is to punch out these little pins, which should release that spring too. Yeah, I'm just going to try and go across the room. Wow, uh, that spring is tight. Yeah. He wasn't kidding about that. No, well, there's one part of it. I love these solid piece calipers instead of the unsightly floating calipers on everybody else's car. Plus, these say R. Hey, one pad out. Now, of course, we could just remove the caliper off anyway, since we're replacing the rotors as well, but removing the pads while we can makes the caliper come off easier. So it doesn't really matter what order you do it in. Let me see if I can get this on film, the lip here. Oh yeah, there you can kind of see it there. Oh my goodness. These were way due. All right, no. use the precise tool. Yeah. Let me go get the deadfall. Yeah, just give it a little tap. There, see? Boom. Yeah, look at that. Like that. Man, Groovesville. Oh, on the back, it's so bad. The leaf. leaf look at that. Wow. Yeah. You got to wonder on that one. Well, the best part of any project, opening stuff. Here is a rotor. And I know that because it says Brembo. How do they have a picture of the dude? Why do they have a picture of the dude? Because that's, that's the guy. Mr. That's, Bimbo? that's Mr. Brembo. Ooh. Now it says, it actually says his name's Carl, and he's he's a road tester. He tested these rotors. He tested these rotors himself. He's already nice. he's already grooved them. Okay, so there's the gross old rotor. Nice new rotor. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if we knew what that torque was supposed to be? That's probably in a instructional video somewhere. Not this instructional video. We're gonna go for tight. Yeah, just, I wouldn't go for crazy. Ah, it's gotta be. Yeah, that's not what holds the whole thing together. Step one, we're gonna have to we collapse have to, these. Yeah, we're gonna have to press these in. Let me go get a C-clamp. Next up are pads. So these guys are pretty thin and gross. 
compared to, look at those. There's some meat left on those guys and they are gonna be squeezing those fresh rotors over there. Let's get these lubed up, clipped on and installed and then we'll have one whole wheel done. <laughs> Next step here is to lube the brake pads that are going in and this is because they're moving around and you want them to move smoothly. And it's important to lube the back side, not the side that's actually applying braking force to the rotor. <laughs> Although I'm sure there's enough weight and heat and speed that I, I guess it would wear off pretty quickly if you accidentally lubed the wrong side, but just try to lube the back side. Just good advice. It's right in there. Hey, they lube these slide pins. I'm gonna put on our newly cleaned retainer spring. I don't know what else yeah, to call this thing. That's a good name. And for the portion of this that requires the most finesse. Ooh. All right. I think it's supposed to be under more tension than this. Oh, it is. See, that's not right. It's gotta go yeah. the other way. Yeah, I'm just holding it in place. Clip has gotta go under there, there. Ah, all right. Oh, that is under some tension. When you're taking it off, the thing, will, I'm sure it'll go cr crashing across the room. I'm trying to see if that's even lined up. It isn't. I'm putting pressure on it. I've got pressure on the spring. Whoops, sorry, sorry, I did it. All right, well, too far, too far, way too far. Try to nail it a little bit. It looks like it's pretty lined up. Sweet. So as some of you astute viewers might notice, we missed a step, and that's to put on these backing plates, which were still on the old brake pad. So this all gets to come off again. I'm gonna go clean off those backing plates, then we can reinstall, and then we'll have one wheel done. It's just part of the learning process. It's okay. All right, and just like that, see, brake job kind of done all over again, but now it's done correctly with the backing plates. All that's left to do is to tighten up those uh, caliper retaining bolts on the back and tighten them to spec, which apparently is 73 pound feet or foot pounds. I don't know, one of the two. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll have one front wheel done. We can move on to a back wheel and then we'll speed up the rest of this process. And next thing you know, this Volvo is gonna break, but not in the traditional sense, which it normally does. It's gonna stop. Anyway. All right, and for the sake of lighting purposes, we're actually gonna work on the opposite corner of the car and do a rear set of brakes, just to show you what the differences are there. Up front, you have the big boy Brembos, as you can see, nice R. These haven't been done yet. And out back, you have the baby Brembos, which are still pretty sizable, and I'm pretty sure bigger than the brakes on my Corvette. <laughs> but we're gonna do a set of rears here. Not a lot different, just smaller. And well, there's a parking brake thing going on there. So make sure that that is off when you do the rears of your Volvo. Pin popping time. Somebody's missed a bunch before on this one. All right, I don't want this spring to fly out, so. All right, well, that one's mostly out. It's still got the spring now. <laughs> okay. And then boom, little retainer clip. And we punch this other guy out, which won't, ah, I'm trying not to mess up my painted caliper which has been so gingerly done in the past. Okay, cool. I'll go clean these up. Look at that, a stick. <clears throat> yep. Pads already coming out. Another stick. Gotta wonder on that. Clips are cleaned. Now it's time to remove this rotor, but this one has the parking brake on it, which was set before we lifted it up in the air. So. It might not come off as easily as the others, but I mean, there's only one way to find out. So you hit it with a hammer, like most things. Ah, look at that. Haha. -ha. Oof. This is gonna make a bunch of dust once I get it on the ground. It's like, uh, it's like hot cocoa in there. These have a decent lip too for what it's worth, if you can see that. So definitely time for the rears. This is so nice and clean. Parking brake shoes look okay. I mean, hopefully you don't use them too much. All right, torque spec unknown on this, just tight. All right, and uh, oh, my job's done, I'm out of here. The rear pads greased up, pins cleaned, ready to go caliper pretty much ready to go back on. So far, we've actually had good luck being able to press 
the pistons in by hand. Sometimes on jobs like this, you have to use like a C-clamp and one of the old brake pads to kind of push those pistons back in because there's sometimes still a lot of residual pressure built up. Luckily, maybe it's because this car hasn't been driven for a little while that uh, well, we haven't had that issue. So that's kind of nice. But also, I want to make sure I can get these shoes in there, pads in there. The reason he keeps saying shoes is because when you grew up working on cars, everything had drum brakes. Or am I, is, am I wrong? Nope. Okay. <laughs> so everything was shoes. Corvettes. Corvettes had discs since like 63. 63 in the front and 65 all the way around. Fun fact. Yeah. Now it's springtime. It is kind of springtime, isn't it? Or no, it hasn't happened yet. Yes, it has. Has it? It is spring. We have. Spring has sprung? Spring has sprung. <laughs> okay, you're done. Really? Yeah. Look at that. This is so much faster than the last time. Yeah, so we're going to go make sure that the fluid in the reservoir hasn't been like pushing out during this entire process because we've been pushing the pistons back which in turn pushes fluid back into the system it is coming up so far so good yes it is coming up ah well as it should it means there's exactly. it means there's some in there <laughs> okay. all right well now we have done one front and one rear so now i can time lapse and speed up through the rest of this process since you guys already know what's going on and we're just becoming experts on this whole deal now you get to listen to sweet music and watch us do a quick brake job we'll be back with you in a second And with that, the brakes are done. Now all we have to do is put the wheels back on, put it on the ground, and see if they work, which is pretty crucial. Excellent work, Uncle Glenn. Let's get all of these wheels put on and get this thing off the jack stands. It is rare that it's on jack stands. Normally it's on the wheel stands. So it had a little bit more of a stationary vacation this time. The brakes are on, the wheels are on. Now it's time for a test drive, which would normally be boring, but I have so much faith in our work and especially my Uncle Glenn's work that we're gonna kick this up a notch and add a little bit of danger by bringing a special passenger with us. Look. Hi, Charlotte. Hi. Are you ready to test out brakes if we're not, that we're not sure are gonna work? Yeah. Okay, so let's get in the car. I've got enough faith to bring my toddler along. Fingers crossed these brakes work. <laughs> She's got her toys. Everything is good. Helps to distract from the uncertainty of these brakes. Oh, it, it's just as likely to go as it is to stop. Which is not likely to go in this car because it spent so much time not going. But it started. Good That's sign. a good, good, good sign. A good start, literally. Actually, this is pretty good. I think it's going to be great. It's going to be great. There's nothing to worry about. Look, sure, it's not worried at all. Not worried. Cheer. <laughs> Yeah. Now, don't say woohoo yet. I haven't touched the brakes. I'm not nervous. Are you comforting your froggy? Is froggy scared about these brakes? No. He, he, I'm talking to my frog because they, he doesn't like me because he's a nice frog. He's oh, a okay. nice frog. All right. Now would be a good time. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get it up to, let's just call it 20. I don't know. <laughs> Those are awesome. All right, Charlotte, you ready? Hey, it slows down. That's a good sign. Okay. All right. I mean, good it, job, Charlotte. We didn't plow into a <laughs> oncoming traffic or, or a brick wall or anything. Try it again. We got to come up to this stop sign. Yeah. It slows down okay. and then it. And I mean, I'm trying not to stand on them, I've, but it's, it's, it does work. Pins aren't flying out. The springs aren't going ping, ping. like underneath the. Yes. <laughs> it's not going all the way to the floor. No. It Does doesn't it feel about the same? It should. As far as pedal travel, yes. Good. Nope, we're just taking a little test drive. We're gonna go right back. Isn't that fun? Yeah. This is what Daddy does a lot. We uh, we take a little test drive and we go right back. <laughs> yeah, you didn't bring me here. You left me behind. Okay. Bye. 
left you behind. I, I, you I don't see. I don't see that happening. <laughs> well, do you like this car, Charlotte? Yeah. Yes. This is a nice this is car. A, this one's this fun. Is a nice car. It Daddy, is. This car is so nice. I got this car from Euro-Asian Bob. Wow. I, wow, I know. Wow. And then we used you to test out the brakes. <laughs> That's how much faith I have in the car and you. I mean, they work. That's all you And they're not for. vibrating. Yep. Nope. So no more pulsing in the foot. Major ah. mission accomplished here. I think we got a winner. Okay, good job, Charlotte. You did it. Yeah. Good luck. That's what you did. You brought us good luck. I did. I did. You sure did. I did. I did. I we should have had you on some of these other it. test drives. I know. We should have brought you on a lot of the other I test drives. Scared. I know. You're so brave. If I were you, I would have been pretty scared. <laughs> well, that was a successful brake job on the Volvo, but we're not quite done yet. After all, this is a Prius based channel, despite what it looks like for the past year of videos. And the Prius actually has a problem being with its wheels and tires. I have a nail and it's actually time to rotate these tires. Fingers crossed it's not on the sidewall and that it's patchable. Well, let's get it jacked up and uh, rotate the tires. There's been a lot of, a lot of jacking in this video. <laughs> ah, see. These are those unsightly calipers I was talking about before. So not cool looking compared to the Volvo calipers. Although look at all this room to work. All right, and look how fast of a process that was. It's like we're getting experts on taking wheels on and off in this episode. Anyway, this is the tire that has the nail in it. So take a gander and there it is. Pretty sizable nail actually, but it's right in the middle of the tread. So I'm guessing unless this tire shop is a total ripoff, this is totally patchable. And I know some of you are saying, just patch it yourself. It's not a big deal. There's like a tire shop walking distance from here. And I actually like the patches they use better than those ones you shove in there with the little gummy stuff. It doesn't matter. Let's put this tire in the back of the Volvo to use its utility. And then I'll have a Prius tire that's not losing air pressure. Let's get this done. And boom, just like that with the magic of YouTube, I'm already back from the tire shop and they found the culprit. Look, it was this little guy or decently sized guy. They let me keep it, which was pretty nice. They're still intact, not even bent, but now I can put the tire back on the Prius and actually looks pretty cool. looks like the Prius is on hydraulics when you look at it from this angle. Let me, uh, let me pop this tire on. No, wait, don't pop the tire. Let me put the tire on. I don't want it to pop. That's the whole point of this whole thing. Jeez. All right, well, this has been a very productive episode. We got the brakes done on the Volvo and we were able to get the Prius in here and get a nail out of its tire. Pretty nice to not have anything go catastrophically wrong for once. And honestly, it's really cool just to have the Prius in the spotlight again. This is kind of the car that started everything on this channel. I made a few random videos with this just to kind of get my nerves out. And then I thought, oh, I'll work up to my Hellcat. But it turns out nobody even cared about the videos I made with my Hellcat and everyone really loved the videos on the Prius. So really, this car is kind of the backbone of the channel. So it's good to give it its time under the lights again. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to follow me on social media. Instagram is a great place to get some behind the scenes content. And I usually try to post little previews of upcoming episodes there. Follow me on Facebook, join my Facebook group, which is actually called Elliot Alvis Prius Posting, which was kind of a joking name, but I guess you can see why. It's a great place to share memes and I'm almost always in there interacting in the comments. And other than that, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe on this video. It greatly helps my YouTube performance. And I will see you guys on the next video where hopefully we get even more done and even less things go wrong. Thank you guys for watching. Now I'm using everybody's favorite brake cleaner, brake clean. So, of course this, this one doesn't work. All right, redo. Aha, all right. Heads up, this does hurt if you get it in open cuts. It's okay, ow, there's the open cut. Yep, just uh, trickled into the back of my hand there. Owie. Never use too much of this stuff, that's for sure. Oh, God. Man, it just finds your cuts, though. <laughs>